Hey guys, what's up? So today we are going to start with economics, contemporary issue, the first topic which is presented by me, that is Ayush Sanghi. Now this is about me that I am a chartered accountant, as you already know, I have taught at various reputed CSE study circles. We are trying to impart very high quality accessible education, as you know, Roman and Gaurav's initiative, Education Revolution, an academy. Please visit us, message us on this Facebook page, official handle of Roman Seni official. Coming to the first topic under the contemporary issue is India's biggest tax reform since independence. Since 1947, this is probably the biggest tax reform in the taxation regime of this country known as Goods and Services Tax, GST. Giving you a little insight about Indian taxation regime, the Indian taxation is divided into two parts, direct and indirect. So, GST will form a part of indirect taxation structure. Are you able to understand indirect taxation structure? Coming to the very first question, why does India need something like GST? What is the need for GST? Kya zarurat hai iski? The purpose of implementing GST is, firstly, the current indirect taxation structure is full of uncertainties due to multiple rates. What do we need, uh, mean by multiple rates? Kya matlab hota hai iska? So right now, giving you just an example, we have many rates such as at the state level, we have VAT. At the central level, we have service tax. At the central level, we again have excise duty, central excise duty, surcharge on excise duty, cesses on the central taxes, customs duty, etc. All these taxes, they, have, they carry multiple rates. Along with multiple rates, the more the number of taxes, the more the forms. So it would become all the more cumbersome in case, in case people have to use all these taxes with whatever they are producing. So all these taxes would be abolished and one taxation structure would exist, that is GST. So it would reduce the multiplicity of rates. The second purpose is, due to multiple rates, there are multiple forms. Jitne zada forms honge, it will in introduce or it will increase the cumbersomeness of the entire taxation structure. So, the tax compliances would be more. But the tax compliances would reduce because we just have one single tax structure, that is GST. Because of this, a lot more transparency would be induced. And the more the transparency in the taxation regime, we can increase and reduce tax evasion. By tax evasion, I mean the people who earn income and do not disclose, they tend to evade tax. That would be stopped because of GST. More than 150 countries have already adopted something like GST. What is GST? What is goods and services tax? The tax that is implemented on any kind of goods as well as services. So remember, goods as well as services. Earlier, what was there? Manufacture of goods attracted excise duty. The sale of goods attracted something like VAT or central sales tax. The provision of services, like what I am doing through this uh, Unacademy channel is that I am providing a service. So if I commercialize it, I will have to pay service tax. Now, this is leviable to service tax. This entire thing would be subsumed within GST. And GST can be defined as a consumption-based tax which is levied when a consumer buys or consumes these goods and services. So please remember it's a consumption-based tax. Whatever you will consume in terms of a service, a lawyer service, a teacher service, an architect service or any kind of good. You purchase a laptop, you purchase a cold drink, you purchase anything. You are paying tax on it. So GST will subsume all, for, all forms of taxes and it was generally known as a consumption-based tax. The importance of Article 246A, as is written over here, and the transfer of power to states. So why does the state government play an important role? State government, as per the state list, have one tax in their hands and that is known as the value-added tax. Central government has all other taxes such as central sales tax, excise duty, service tax, etc. Now, there will be a lot of resistance from the state government since VAT will be abolished as soon as GST is implemented. So, a need for a constitutional provision under Article 246A will transfer certain powers in the hands of state governments. So, let's see what it would state. 
the parliament and the legislature of every state mind you every single state of india will have the power to make laws with respect to goods and services tax imposed by the union or the state so they would have the opportunity to chip in and to fix the taxation rates so that when vat is abolished they do not lose out on their revenue in terms of gst so this is the importance of article 246a the taxes that will be replaced or as we are saying the taxes that will be subsumed when gst will be implemented so implementation of gst would replace what kind of taxes the taxes imposed by the union government union government that is a central government first tax as as i told you is central excise duty second is additional excise duty which is in addition to central excise duty third is service tax fourth is additional duty on customs also known as cvd countervailing duty etc all these duties will be subsumed except for something by the name of duty on customs this is duty that is levied on any kind of import or duty on any kind of export this is something that will continue to exist even after implementation of gst i repeat even after implementation of gst the customs duty will continue to exist all other duties as we have mentioned over here will be subsumed so after implementation of gst there will be gst rate and there will be customs duty rate now the taxes imposed by state governments first is vat or sales tax it will be it will be abolished octroi this is known as chungi chungi in hindi or entry tax this will be replaced purchase tax or any kind of state cesses surcharges etc everything will be replaced and one tax will exist that is gst goods and services tax so you can see that all these taxes will finish off and one tax will be introduced one single tax so this will this would reduce the burden of the departments the burden of the people who want to who wish to deposit this duty who wish to collect this duty all the forms that have to be filled up all the date of returns that have to be complied with so the entire compliance procedure in a country like india which is fully heavily loaded with 125 crore indians would be reduced and it would and it would be much more effective if the single umbrella tax is implemented now gst will be administered by this is a very welcome move and a very intelligent move by the india government by a gst council a council that will comprise of the union finance minister as its chairman union minister of state in charge of revenue or finance and minister in charge of finance or taxation or any other minister mind you any other minister nominated by each state government so you can see by each state government would constitute the council so by including any minister by the state government that would necessarily or most probably be the finance minister of the state would also be a part of the gst council so as you can see the state government's representation in the council is as much as the representation of the central government so whatever decisions would be taken they would be highly democratic and they would they would result in the kind of spirit of our constitution will be maintained so gst council is a very welcome move it will administer everything so the objective of the gst council is first that which central or state taxes would go in gst as we are just discussed in the previous slide all the taxes such as central excise duty vat sales tax etc would go in this ye decide karega gst council second which goods and services are subject to gst so something like the items that are made of khadi are exempt in certain states so they would they would specifically specify that which items will be levyable and which items would be exempt and the other items that have particularly to be exempted are excluded so that is in our next slide third is that at which rate and on which basis the gst will be decided so there have been many rates that have been thrown out do not consider any of those rates unless there is an official announcement one rate has been 16% other has been 23% uske baad there has been a rate at the rate of 26% so all are still proposed there is no single rate that has been given officially by any of any of the ministry or any of the parliamentary committee so do not go by any rate this will be decided by the gst council when the gst is implemented and as we are just seen the composition of gst council the voting strength will be divided in this pattern one third vote of the central government and two third of the state government so you see that state government has more voting power and any resolution or any decision that has to be passed it needs at least 20 75% support 
75% support from this entire council. So as you can see that it is highly democratic, very welcome moved, it is highly democratic. There is also a provision of having a DSA or a Dispute Settlement Authority. So it is self-explanatory that a dispute settlement would be administered by this authority. Dispute between whom? Dispute between the centre and the state. So as we just understood, the state governments would lose out on the revenue of VAT which was under direct control of the state government. Where as soon as they will lose this out, they will get a certain share in GST. If they are not happy with their share in GST, so they can file a complaint with the DSA and the DSA would come out with, with a resolution or with a, with a solution in order to keep the state governments happy. So in addition to GST Council, another body that has been proposed is a DSA or a Dispute Settlement Authority that would resolve disputes between the central and the state government. Any kind of appeal from the DSA would directly be dealt with the Supreme Court. As you can see, the Supreme Court, which is, which is the authority that is the custodian of the constitution. And under Article 246A, it will take the custody of any kind of dispute occurring between the centre and the states. A very, very good move, highly democratic in terms of DSA. The exclusions as we had discussed in the earlier slide, now these things that have been particularly excluded from the ambit of GST. Earlier these goods, some of these goods were taxable by the state governments through VAT or value added tax, which means that they will continue to be taxable by the state governments under value added tax even after GST is implemented. So these goods are something like petroleum, crude, HSD, high speed diesel, natural gas, ATF, aviation turbine fuel and alcoholic for human consumption. This is vatable at the highest rate of 20% in every state. So, this 20% foregone revenue will not be foregone by any state government as, as this continues to exist by the, within the state government's ambit and GST will not include something like alcohol. Now, this is something again which has been proposed. It may or may not be there but as of now, as we speak right now, this is excluded from the ambit of GST. The other important features of GST are firstly in case of supply of goods on interstate trade. Interstate trade means the trade between two states. So between Rajasthan and Gujarat if things are being traded. If had they been sold within Rajasthan that means from Rajasthan and to Rajasthan within Rajasthan it would have been called intrastate trade. Under intrastate trade the state government gets VAT value added tax. But when it comes to interstate trade, that is from one state to other state, the state of origination, that is Rajasthan, will get something by the name of CST, Central Sales Tax. This is a question that was asked in PT 2014, that who gets the share of the Central Sales Tax. So Central Sales Tax rate is decided by the central government, but from whichever state the goods originate, it gets to take the, take the revenue of those goods in terms of CST. So it will lose out on VAT if there is interstate sale but it will gain central sales tax instead of VAT. So in case of supply of goods on interstate trade an additional tax would be levied at the rate of 1% and this is the maximum that has been proposed. It will be less than this. This will be collected by the central government for a period of two years, first two years from the time GST is implemented. The amount so collected will be assigned to the states from where the supply originates. So as I told you, origination state, that is Rajasthan in case of our example, will get hold of this additional tax. So it means that although VAT will be subsumed in GST, CST will be subsumed in GST, but there is an additional tax of 1% only in case of interstate trade that will be chargeable over and above GST. So let's say GST will be implemented at 16% and if the good that is leviable to GST is sold from Rajasthan to Gujarat, it will be leviable at 17% where 16% will go between central and the state government and this additional 1% will go to Rajasthan in our case, state of origination from, this has, from where this has originated. A very important feature only in order to maintain the satisfaction of the state governments at a high level. The benefits that have been derived from implementing GST, 
very very important topic what are the benefits that have been derived from implementing gst the first benefit is that it is a single and unified rate a highly effective and efficient solution as a single rate will subsume all the multiple rates and it will simplify it will make it transparent the entire indirect taxation structure for every person all the individuals all the companies especially the multinational corporations or the foreign companies for them if we have a single structure it will improve our ranking in case of in case of ease of doing business in this country where our ranking had fallen last year so a very welcome move to have a unified structure the biggest advantage of gst second is that all the key decisions in the hands of gst council the importance of which we have already discussed in the previous slides the representatives from both central and state government is in place and states would have a stay say in implementation of tax laws in their territories so all the tax laws that can be implemented in their territories they will have a direct say so there will be no resentment in case of this and the lastly we can say that full compensation for the first 5 years again something that has been proposed let's see that this will be 5 years or 10 years in future the state governments for any kind of revenue loss so if the state governments was charging vat earlier that was coming entirely to it it would lose out on vat so whatever will be the difference of losing out on vat that will be compensated by the central government after allocating them a certain share in the gst so if gst is implemented at 16% 8% will go to central government 8% will go to state government and the state government was charging vat at the rate of 12.5% they will stop charging this they will get 8% and the differential 4.5% as compensatory tax allowance will be given by the central government to the state government in order to maintain the satisfaction this is proposed to to be done for the first 5 years for the first 5 years all these four benefits would keep the satisfaction of state governments at a very high level this was the entire topic of gst do not be scared of the indian taxation regime we we would be coming out with many more videos on something like taxes and other contemporary issues as you know that this is a part of the education revolution so i am a bit a small cog in this large wheel of education revolution an academy so please like comment subscribe on this channel you can mail to us on all these links that have been provided you already know facebook thumbs up roman seni official channel an academy official channel this is our twitter handle spread this word education for all revolution and thank you very much for watching the tutorial